Hello. Hi. I am Fiona <laughs> Sitkin, a host of a talk show, The Bridge for Women Worldwide. And today I am hosting the ninth episode of The Bridge series. And its title is Of Women and Children from Friends with Love to Teenagers. The guest for today's show, for today's interview, is Valerie Griston Elser, a founder and executive director at Give Us the Floor, hailing from San Francisco and originally from Paris, France. Let me say a few words about myself, too, and also about our talk show. A professional educator, I based my talk show on my Huffington Post blogs and the recent book, How They Made It in America, Success Stories and Strategies of Immigrant Women from Isabella Leander to Ivana Trump, to fashion designer Josie Natori, plus more. There are 18 prominent women featured in the book out of 100 that I interviewed for my books and blogs. And today I have a distinct honor to host and to interview and present Valerie Grisong Elser, who may be a subject of my next book. Welcome to the show, Valerie. Thank you for having me. You're welcome, of course, and um, I love to have you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Valerie Grisong Elser is an advertising and television professional with profound expertise in engaging teenagers. She was studying teenagers' behavior. She was reflecting on her own struggles when a young adult. She was helping her two daughters through the teen years. And then she was transitioning from Paris, France, to San Francisco, USA. Her combined expertise, her combined experiences led her to understand that teenagers can perfectly help each other through different stresses of all kinds. So in 2015, Valerie founded her own nonprofit called Give Us the Floor. And so you go. Uh, it is a very, very successful company now. You see now that Valerie Griston Elsa is a special kind of an entrepreneur, quick to come from idea to concept to implementation. Welcome to the show, Valerie. Thank you very much. All it's right. a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be on your show. Uh, and my pleasure too. Okay, <laughs> let's, uh, you know, mutual love club, huh? <laughs> um, all right, the first question is, with your profound entrepreneurial career, both in France and the United States, what made you to being so ambitious? How did it all start? Oh, that's a loaded question. Um, I would say it really started in my um, childhood because I was gr I grew up um, in the suburb of Paris in a very diverse suburb. My mother um, was doing minimum wage. Uh, I, she was a single mother. So ah. I always felt that I was um, different from other people and not as good as other people. As a kid, hmm. uh, I couldn't participate to a lot of um, activities that the other one were participating. As a teenager, I couldn't buy records, I couldn't go to concerts, to camp. So I, that really what gave me my drive. I just wanted to get out of there and do something. Ah. Okay, all right. So that's good. Um, and I know that you are now immigrant in the States for seven years, right? Eight. Eight, for eight years. Okay. So you are mainly a self-made woman with ambition and drive. Good. I love that. But why did you seek success in a new country? 
So I had this idea of doing a virtual world for teenagers and pre-teenagers. And it was a very ambitious um, project. And I thought that I needed a big market. And I had been working with the US for years before. And I actually always wanted to go to the US and work to the US in the US because for me, it's easier to work in the US because business wise. It's like, uh -huh. it, it, it's just more straightforward. People give more chance to people. Um, so I really wanted to go to the US and, and this project that I had was obviously made for the US because um, it was ambitious. So the market needed to be big. And also the parents, I was believing that the parents in France were not ready to believe that you can do good through internet for ah, kids. I see. Well, so you wanted a better life and better business, so you came to the States. Right. Very logical. Yeah, I, and I'm glad. I'm happy for you. All right, Valerie, now that your company, Givers the Floor, is up and running, could you please elaborate on its objective? So the objective of Givers the Floor is to help teens in distress. Uh -huh. And the way to do that is to bring back positive peer human connection, but via screen. So it's uh -huh. really bringing back a positive human connection, but because it's very hard to get them in person, it's we're doing it via uh, their mobile phone and their screen. And it's, it, it's been very successful. We, we're very yeah. happy. I know that. I know that. Yeah. And uh, could I ask you, what is your vision for the company's future? Now everything is okay, but are we evolving, moving somewhere? Oh yeah, we're in the, we're right in the middle of scaling. So we, we started um, a little more than two years ago. We went, we you know, we tested, we looked, and after six months, we saw the, 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 the huge amount of participation of a participant and, and the testimonial, they were saying how much it was helping them. Uh -huh. And so we thought, okay, we are on to something. So we kept growing. And then um, at the last year, end of last year, beginning of the year, we had major funding to uh -huh. grow and scale. And um, so we, our goal now is to help 10,000 teenagers by the end of 2021. Right now we're helping 1,000 of them. Yeah, that's great. That's, that's great. Continue your good job. Thank you. <laughs> Valerie, it's my understanding that Give Us The Floor became famous for the innovative format which mm -hmm. leverages the teens obsession or devotion call it whatever with social media right so right. let me ask you three practical questions that might be interesting for our audience and you may answer in whatever succession you choose because they are all interconnected it's about the guts of your business all right question one how do you create a safe community online question two do the teenagers sign up themselves or do their mothers or fathers need to help them with that? And the, the, the third question is probably um, very important too. How do you reach out to their parents who want to, um, you to help their children? So I'll start that, what, how do we reach out to parents? We don't actually reach out to parents. Uh -huh. We really try to find directly the teens that, are, that need help. And uh, we really mostly find them on social media. Uh -huh. and, uh, and because one of the things we've seen is that if a parent or if an adult recommend a teen, to uh -huh. join, they won't do it uh -huh. because it's kind of a parent stuff, and and they they, they don't want their parent 
to tell them to go do something. So, mm -hmm. but we, we find them directly, they're way more inclined because it's very initiative. They see that right. the team things, that they're no adult. Um, they're way more inclined to sign up. So that's the first natural, thing. natural environment. Yeah, yeah. It's just that, um, you know, a lot of the teens that we have have tension in family. And, uh -huh. and it's just at the age, when you're at this age, most of the time, you don't want your parents or the adult to tell you what to do. Just uh -huh. So by reaction, you won't do it. So there are exceptions, of course, there are some. Right. But, um, but, but we go directly to the teenagers and they find uh -huh. us and they sign up. So they, we don't need parents, they sign up by themselves. We serve 13 to 19 year old, not younger. Um, uh -huh. And, and uh, so sometimes we have parents that contact us because they wonder if it's a safe place, how does that work? And uh, so we, we have a conversation with them and we explain them why it is safe. So I'll go back now to why is it safe and how do you build a, a safe community online? So first, it's groups of teenagers. So our core program um, or what we call supportive group chats. Ah. So they are groups of between eight and 16 teenagers Oh. And one or two of them are, are trained as facilitators. Okay, so you train your facilitators. So mm -hmm. we train the teens and they are teenagers and they are facilitators and they are really the ones who are the liaison to the adult team. And if anything seems odd, if there is a crisis, is there any doubt they are trained and encouraged to reach out to what we call the adult advisor. And ah. then the adult advisor would intervene if they think it's necessary. So that's uh -huh. how we make it up. So it's not a thousand people together, it's really groups. And they are matched by, um, the, when they sign up, they decide their main focus. So it can be mental health, uh, LGBTQIA plus, or uh, life challenges. And then they match by age uh -huh. and, and also by um, diversity and geography. It's like we don't put them from the same area. They love to be mixed with teens from the other side of the country, from different, um, uh -huh. from different okay. uh, places. I see, I see, and, and the groups are 8 to 10, so this is actually a small environment, right? 8, eight to 16. 8, eight to 16? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, all right, so, and there are criteria, as you mentioned, why one child is put into this group and that one yes. in the other, so adult supervisors are doing it, is that right? Yes. Okay. I think, I think it's great. Thank you. <laughs> great. Yeah, it's, um, it's very nice. It's great. Okay. Um, um, I have a surprise for you now. Oh, my God. Do you see that? Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, actually um, a quote from yourself, from your old <laughs> questionnaire. That's what yep. you wrote. I see this is in inverted commas. It's about your obsessions or slash passions, whatever you call them. And I would like you to comment on probably one or two points with respect to how these old obsessions slash passions relate to your current life. Yeah. So my dad, so I think I wrote, yeah, I wrote a blog about that. It was probably about five or six years ago, something like that. So most of them are, are still um, valid. So I would say my daughters, I'm less obsessed about them because uh -huh. they're more on their own. They grow up. So one graduated from college, from college in Montreal. She's got a job. She's happy a nice boyfriend, you know, so I've, I have nothing more really to do in her life. I'm here when she needs me, but uh -huh. it's not like a day-to-day -day 
supporting and making sure everything goes well. The second one um, is 18 and she graduated from high school. She took a gap year and she's working now, but uh -huh. she's going to go to college next, next year. So I kind of have the impression that they're on, you know, they're on rails and ready to go for life and they don't need me that much anymore. Uh -huh. At least I don't have to watch them. I think they grew up enough that they are very independent and uh -huh. uh, I'm very proud of them. I think they're very sensitive and empathic girls. So, so I think, yeah, they're on their way to have a great life, I believe. Yeah. My company is definitely, um, give us a floor, is uh, one of my big obsessions. Yeah, so know. this one stays, this obsession stays. This obsession stays, it's in my mind all the time. How can we do things better? We had a problem, how can we, you know, solve that? How can we help more teams? How can we better fundraise? Right. Uh, so, so it's on my mind all the time. The team, same thing because I'm, I'm um, well, I spend a lot of time with them online, of course, but we communicate all day long. Um, we use Slack, so we're like, on, um, and they're just awesome. They're, they're amazing people, very committed to the mission of Give Us The Floor. And I'm very, very thankful Good. to have found them. And so I think I'm, I'm um, surrounded by amazing uh, people with great talent. Yeah, Jeremy. thank you. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. Yeah. Well, I, I am glad that some of your obsessions relaxed their grip upon you and some stayed, which is good. It helps you to live, learn, and move on, like with the company. You are growing yeah. with a company, right? Right, right. So germs are still like, yeah, I'm, I'm a germaphobe. Uh, uh -huh. And a lot of people admit were making fun of me for that. I would say that with the pandemic, it's like now everybody is like I am. <laughs> you know? ah. like, I wash my hands all the time. I'm being very careful. I've always carried with me antibacterial. I wouldn't wear a mask, but yeah. If I was sick, I would wear a mask for cooking, preparing food. Uh -huh. for the yeah. And, and uh, yeah, I'm very obsessed about touching the knob doors and things yeah, like yeah. that and washing my hand after or putting my, you know, I pull my, <laughs> my yeah. um, sleeve. And so, yeah, that's very still accurate. Okay. And, yeah. Um, so this helps you, of course, now. This is nothing new. Germs or viruses, yeah. My life is the same, like, I guess, germs wise. Yeah, I have a. <laughs> germ wise. <laughs> except, except I actually got COVID. Um, and uh, so now I'm, I'm believed that I'm mostly immune, so I'm not that afraid of COVID anymore, but I'm still of the other germs that uh -huh. are all, so I don't want to get over stuff. Yeah. Uh, my body, I have to say, I let it go a bit with the body, with uh -huh. aging, I'm getting a bit of weight and it's harder and harder to lose the weight. And so I'm, I'm in the state of mind now that I, I'm like, okay, you need to get, you need to accept it. You need to get you need to, accept to, it. Not, to not be as fit and as fit uh. as you used to be. Um, I'm working on it. <laughs> It's not, that's right it's not, that's forever <laughs> it's not that easy you know to 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 grow older and and to see your body changing in shape but yeah i'll have to accept it because it's not gonna get better no anyway <laughs> that's good okay thank you so much for the such an interesting response now, um, another flashback that I would like to offer you, Valerie. You may remember our common friend, a woman who actually brought us together, Maya Strella Migotti, uh, SVP and head of Ericsson Silicon Valley. Maya shared with myself and with you, as far as I know, her motto, her principle in life, forget failures, remember the learning from it and in my book she was featured for inclusive leadership which includes 
learning from failures. Now I am wondering if you could share with us what are your background values or at least one value, what is your guiding star to help you live, learn and move on and why, please. Um, so yeah, inclusive leadership, really, I always, always listen to the team and to people around me. I, uh, we do it with the teenagers too, uh, for, with our users. I think that's one of the reasons where, um, Give Us a Flow is so successful is that we're always listening to them, asking questions to the user, how can we do better? Um, and, and we, we listen to them. So that, that's a big part. That's a big part of my, um, yeah. of, of my way of leading, uh, character building. I like to see the team grow. And so I'm always trying to, um, the mm -hmm. team to, to have them evolve and not stay where they are. Uh, perseverance. Mm -hmm. I'm a big, yeah, I've, I've, People see me as very resilient, and uh -huh. um, I can sometimes be stubborn. <laughs> ah. <laughs> you know, uh, so definitely um, the American mindset. I, so I'm not sure what is the American mindset anymore. So maybe if you want to tell me what it is, um, I would love that, and then I'll tell you if I. Uh, to me, the American mindset was the American mindset, like maybe 50 years ago. I'm not sure it's as much as applicable right now. It's, it's all right. It's all right. Disregard it. Just, you know, in the book it's explained. But it's, yeah. Okay. You, you just admit it. I, I love what you are saying about inclusive leadership and perseverance. I think um, these are very characteristic of you. Uh, both inclusive leadership right. and perseverance. And uh, that makes you, you know, a person very much, was very much in common with Maya Estrella Migotti. She was on my interview too and gave an excellent, excellent interview. So, yeah, I like Maya very much. Uh, she's a, <coughs> sorry, she's an amazing person and one of the first, I mean, women to, get to that level in in uh, like a, a communication company like that yeah like uh, yeah a communication engineer at such a engineer. level yeah yeah so yeah. yeah i have a lot of admiration for her oh yeah um, Me too. <laughs> <laughs> emotional intelligence uh yeah it's not very easy um i'm trying my best i have a tendency sometimes to be so much in what i have to in to accomplish but i kind of you know um uh, i can be sometimes a bit hard on people and on my team but it seems that they don't um they're not angry at me for it they get it they get it while i'm doing it and they also know that i'm i'm always trying to support them if they need uh -huh. support, um, it just, uh, and I think it's a very big difference. So I don't know being from Russia, but one of the thing I've really seen in the U S compared to Europe, at least France in that oh, yeah. in France, you do, you say things, you say critics and people are like, okay, you criticize what I've done because it's not good and that's fine, you know, and I'm going to do better. Right. In the U.S., you have to be very careful because people are not that used to be criticized and they don't like uh -huh. it that much. You have to be way softer in the feedback that you give in the U.S. So there's a, yeah. a cultural shock a bit. Right, like. right. Intercultural differences are very, very important in business. That's why intercultural business, the the areas that I am in is important and survives and there are so many people doing because yeah. it's real. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's really real. Um, and so uh, strategic thinking, yeah, it's like yeah, you always have to think uh, ahead. Yeah, right? you, you are very good at that. I, I, yeah, I think I am. Sometimes maybe I think too much of a problem that can come come down the road so i try to remember myself and i say okay one step at a time don't, don't you know? 
And um, communication skill and creativity. Um, creativity is, a, is a, I love doing creative things, for example. Yeah, I, and you are. I Thank you. And I still, sometimes I still do the video editing for the video we post on YouTube because I find it just easier if I do it myself than just telling somebody what I really want. Uh -huh. and faster and uh -huh. it comes from my background so i i i am i was an editor at some point so um right not a very very good one but i can do uh, a minimum <laughs> okay okay thank you that's that's very good thank you so much for a comprehensive response to that um excellent and i should tell you that yours is an amazing success story a story of quick success in the US and I admire you for that. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. you give many lessons for me and for our listeners too. So please a round of applause for Valerie. <laughs> okay. Uh, and um, now let's move to conclusions to take the ways. I would recommend our listeners to take three takeaways here. One Valerie Grison Elser is a role model entrepreneur supporting teens and tweens. Two, to help your teenagers, you can use Give Us the Floor programs of her company. And you should remember that teenagers need more attention now than ever. Why? Because it's not easy. There is no vaccine for parental lack of attention to our children. Please remember that. And the third takeaway is please order the book, How They Made It in America, to learn more about success in the US. Let's connect. I am very grateful that you came to the show and listened to us. You can write the questions or comments on YouTube on the Bridge for Women Worldwide. Also write to me directly via email and via website, fionasitkin.com. And this is one word, fionasitkin, one word, dot com. And uh, now, thank you again. And both Valerie and myself hail you. <laughs> Wish you well and stay healthy. Bye-bye. Bye, thank you very much.